Hi, I'm Anders Olof Vendin from Ludvika, Sweden. I make music, and when I do, I call myself Money Brother. I've just been on a musical journey around the whole globe. To Chicago and Los Angeles in the United States, to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, to Kingston in Jamaica, to London in the UK, to Auckland in New Zealand, and to Cape Town in South Africa. At all these places, I met local musicians and recorded with them what's going to be my next album. An album that will sound like the world. We laid down the foundations of the album in Chicago, then moved on to Los Angeles to record some vocals, some friends of mine, took a plane down to Rio de Janeiro where we recorded drums and even more vocals. Since I was a kid, I listened to reggae. And it always was one of my biggest dreams to record in Jamaica. And this is where we came here, to Kingston, Jamaica, the home of reggae. Yeah. So is there a government yard? So I asked this guy I met if he could take me to Trenchtown and just walk me through it, because I I never oh, been down there. So yeah, and I wanted to see those those places and I thought there were <laughs> I thought there were a specific government yard that that Bob Marley sings about in No Woman No Cry and I wanna see that place. Turns out there's government yards all over the place of course. So how come all these musical legends from, from yeah, right from this house? What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Reggae music was born out of the oppression of the people. Yeah. yeah through the oppression, oppression, you get certain things and certain good vibes yep. out of the man then, you know what I'm Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they want to directly sing what they want to feel. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What happens now, though, we came to Tivoli Garden and um, we met this guy, Fraser, and um, he got a studio here and he showed us some stuff and uh, we brought a hard drive, so we're going to try to record something together right here. I mean, this is fucking cool. They say you were not a tough guy, but he looked tough enough to me. When I put this song on, because it clearly got a Jamaican influence, when I put this song on, I'm nervous. So I look at the reactions, you know? I can't really remember the lyrics, but here I do some freestyle. Because my heart, because my soul, because I'm old, so them is with me where you go. Something like that. Those guys looking at you and uh, you know, they're smoking all that stuff all the time, you know. And uh, one of them said, who wrote this rhythm? Uh, it was me, and I was like, boom, cloud man, it's great. And you know, these old guys coming in, walking into the room and saying, it's like, hey, good job, yeah. good job. I've been wanting to sing in, in Kingston, Jamaica, since I was six years old. It's fantastic, and when you hear the percussion we recorded in Rio de Janeiro, you hear this guy singing over the, the the beat that we did in Chicago, that's when, you know, like all this work I put in this project, you know. Ah, it's crazy. If, if you're a father and bring your girl to the, to the carnival and she's like, Wow, and you look at her and like, oh, I made that little girl very happy. That's how I felt bringing Krilla to Jamaica. They say he won't a tough guy. But he looked tough enough to me. That's the reaction, is a reaction. So fun, so turn away around. Yeah, pick up right here. Every Shit, every action is a reaction. No, the, the exit Sorry, is two yeah. times. The destroy line, destroy, you do okay. two times. Okay. Yeah. Hey, okay. Do you know to say, my friend? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know it's that. like in Bana, Jamaica. Him have the roots, they have the culture, the inner him is in. It's just for the world now, accept him and hear him, I say. So, people, just look out for him. He's in. He's coming with a bang. When I go. Because my heart, because my soul, when I go, fire in your eyes, fire in your eyes, fire in your eyes, fire in your eyes. Fire in your eyes. Fire in your eyes. 
Jesus and stuff, you see? It's been tremendous. Actually, we're in the studio. <laughs> That's not how it works back home. <laughs> I'm happy to get this album out in fucking 2015. You know? yeah. Jamming and recording with Ross Fraser Jr. and Tivoli Gardens was a great start to the Jamaican part of the trip. But there was something even more exciting to come. A session with the legendary Sly Dunbar and his band. I see you guys, you know. Filming a little bit where the bass player says his stuff, and I'm looking, kind of looking at the drum kit, wondering when Sly's gonna show up. And this cool dude with a cool hat just sneaks in there, starts setting his drums up. I'm like, I just seen him in all pictures, you know, but he still looked like a kid, you know, he must be in his 70s. I'm like, but it's him, right? That's Sly Dunbar in there. How goes it? We got Sly in the studio. Hey. Hi, I'm Anders. Hi. Yeah, man, I'm Sly. Good to meet you, Sly. I'm running a bit late, so I'm gonna start. Hey, coming. don't worry about it. Yeah, the, it's a, yeah. you know, it's an honor having you here. Yeah, man. So, uh, but you, you just make yourself at home. Yeah, I'm <laughs> gonna do that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I walk in there and say, hey, Nick, make yourself at home. He's in the fucking studio. He's been recording it since the 70s, and I'm telling him to make yourself at home. I've been in Jamaica for four days. <laughs> You hear me in this line? Yeah. All right. We recorded, I recorded a few weeks ago, we recorded this track. It's not a reggae song, it's a rock and roll song. I like it, but you know, it's it missing, missing the groove in a bit. Like I'm off to something else and I don't really know what that is, but I think you guys can play it. I'm trying not to think about like fucking, you know, a few years ago, these guys played with, you know, Rolling Stones if they wanted to. I try to think of like, you know, what I'm bringing to the table is good enough for these guys and, and they could help me make it even better. I have to think like that. All right, let's do that. So it's gonna be something like this. I might not bother get in my room tonight Sleep by the I kind of don't want it in half tempo, so I kind of want that. So once once they learn the song, I'm like, all right. So now we could maybe maybe you just go a little bit crazy there. I like that stuff you do, and he, and he knows what I'm talking about. It's very easy to work with musicians like that. <laughs> Yeah, man, I think it's great because I've, I've done so many different recording sessions and when you hear the progression of a song, if you think it's a hit song, you can hear it. All it takes here, we're building the song, trying to get the best groove on it, the best tempo. And the last take we think was when we sent it home, you know? 
we got the food cooking the pot, so, so that's it. As much as I wanted to stay in Jamaica, I also wanted my album recordings to stay in progress. The musical world tour wouldn't be complete if you haven't recorded in the birthplace of pop, in the birthplace of heavy metal, in the birthplace of punk rock music. London, here we come. Coming up on Money Brother Around the World. You want to make your dance like that? I'm super fucking hungover today. Basically, I have no tickets, no passport, no guitar. We have to fucking make that. Ah, that was magic. No pressure. Just do the thing. <laughs> 